Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So I'm continuing the problems on accounting for price level changes. Already 20 problems I have completed in the earlier videos. Now 21st problem I'm going to do now. So before watching this video, I expect my viewers to have watched the earlier videos. If you join in the middle, you may not be able to fully understand the concept of accounting for price level changes. So my suggestion, if you want the complete command, watch the beginning videos. First you watch the introduction part, then starting two, three videos if you watch, then definitely you can get the ground of understanding the remaining videos. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you to go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject advanced corporate accounting. In that subject, you can, you will find the video of accounting for price level changes. Select the video, watch the first introduction part, then starting two, three videos, you can be able to understand now. So before starting the 21st problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which are given in the link under my description. So keep the problems ready before starting the problem. Now 21st problem. In the context of inflation accounting system, adjust the following profit and loss account and balance sheet under the current purchasing power or CPP method to ascertain the changes in net profit and reserves. So we have to convert the income statement which is given in historical basis. Now we have to convert it into CPP method. We have to prepare the income statement according to current purchasing power method. Already in the previous problem also we have done. We have converted the income statement from traditional, from conventional method to the CPP method. Similar uh, problem is there. Profit and loss account for the year ended 31st December 1996. Sales, rupees in thousands, 500. Sales are 500. Three zeros are omitted. Actually it is 5 lakh. So three zeros we have omitted to find opening stock 80 purchases 420 total 500 less closing stock 70 430 is the cost of sales to so 500 minus 430 70 is the gross profit operating expenses depreciation on building 5 administration 25 total 30 direct 30 net profit 40 so this is the income statement as per the historical cost accounting method now balance sheet is given rupees in thousands, share capital 200, reserves are 200, total liability side 400, land 140, building 200 less depreciation 45, total 155 net, then stock 70, debtors 40, cash 30, total current assets are 140 minus creditors, that means current assets minus current liability creditors 105, so add up 140 plus 155 plus 105 400. Balance sheet talent. The following data are given. Closing stock was acquired during the last quarter of 1996. We are closing the accounts on 31st December 1996. The closing stock was coming from the last quarter of 1996. So we have to see what is the index number for last quarter for 1996. And the opening stock during the last quarter of 1995. Opening stock is coming from the last year. Last year is 1995. Current year is 1996. So while calculating the opening stock value, take the index of the last quarter of 95. While calculating the CPP value of closing stock, take the index number of the last quarter of 1996. Then the land and building are, were acquired and the capital issued during 1988. So converting the value of land, building and share capital the index number we have to use is 80 and uh, index number for 1988 the building were depreciated straight line over 40 years the relevant retail price indices are 1988 average 60 so index number for 1988 is given 60 so for what it is given for using for land building and capital it is given one sentence, the land building were acquired and the capital issued during 1988. So when we have to convert the land value, building value and share capital value, we use the index number 60. 1995 last quarter average 108. 1995 last year, last year last quarter average is 108. This will make use to convert the opening stock. And December uh, 1995, December 31st, opening 110. 
that is current year's opening index is 110. 1996 last quarter average 116. Current, current year 1996 last quarter average 116. This will make use to calculate opening uh, closing stock, closing stock CPP value. Then 1996 average current year's average 140. And 1996 December 31st closing index is 180. We are closing the accounts on 31st December 1996. So on this date, the index number is 118. So in all the numerator CF, correction factor, numerator index number will take 118. Sales, purchase and administration expense are assumed to occur evenly over the year and hence at average prices. So for sales, purchases and operating administration expenses, we use the average index. So average index of 1996 is given 114. So 114 is the average index for the year 1996. First of all, we'll convert the income statement from CPP to uh, from uh, historical to CPP. Adjustment of profit and loss account under current purchasing power method for the year ended 31st December 1996. Rupees in thousands. Particular historical cost correction factor CPP. Sales. Sales are given in the problem 500. Now correction factor. Sales occurred during the year evenly. Evenly means we have to, have, we have to take the average index. The average index is 114. And the index at the end of the year is 118. End of the year. 31st December index is 118. And average index for the year 1996 is 114. So multiply 500 into 118 divided by 114, 517.54. This is the CPP value of sales. From this, we deduct the cost of sales. Opening stock. Opening stock historical value is given 80. Now, opening stock was purchased in the last quarter of 1995. Last quarter of 1995. So, index number for last quarter of 1995 is 108, given in the problem. 108 is the index number for the last quarter of 1995. So 80 into 118 by 108, 87.4 purchases. Purchase historical cost 420. And it is given that purchases are evenly made throughout the year. So we take the average. Average is 114. So 420 into 118 by 140, 434.74. Now add up both 500 and 522.1. Minus closing stock. Closing stock value, historical value is given 70. And it is given that closing stock was acquired during the last quarter of 1996. So index number for last quarter of 1996 is 116, given in the problem. So 70 into 118 by 116, 71.24. Subtract, minus, we get 430 as cost of goods sold, historical. And CPP method 450.94, this is the cost of goods sold. Sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. A minus B. Sales minus COGS is gross profit. So gross profit C. Uh, 430. Uh, 500 minus 430 is 70. 517.54 minus 450.94, 66.6. This is the gross profit. From gross profit, we deduct the operating expenses. Two operating expenses are given at the depreciation and administration. Depreciation 5. It is given that land building were acquired in 1988. 1988. The index number of 1988 is 60. That's why depreciation will take the index number 60. So 118 by 60 into 5, 9.83. Administration expenses are incurred evenly throughout the year. So we take the average. So administration expenses are 25. Average index is 114. So 25 into 118 by 114, 25.88. Now add up both 30 and here 35.71. Now ultimately we find out the net profit. Gross profit minus operating expenses. So gross profit is C and operating expenses D. So C minus D, 70 minus 30, 40 is the net profit. Similarly, 66.60 minus 35.70, 30.89 is the net profit. In this way we have converted the income statement from historical method into CPP method half of the problem completed now we are required to make the balance sheet also so see here balance sheet share capital share capital value is given in the beginning of the year 200 now we have to convert it into CPP method 
the share capital was acquired in 1988. In 1988, the index number was 60 given in the problem. So 118 by 60 into 293.33. Now come to asset side, land. The beginning of the year, land value was 140. And again, we take the 60 index number because it was acquired in 1988. So 118 by 16 to 140, 275.3 building. The beginning of the year building value was 200 and depreciation provided 45. So deduct 45, 155. Now again, it was acquired in 1988. So 60, 118 by 16 to 155, we got it. Stock. Stock is the closing stock. Already we have taken closing stock 70. 70 into 118 by 116. 70 into 118 by 116. 71.21. Remaining. Current assets and current liabilities we are taking as it is because they are monetary assets and monetary liabilities. So debtors beginning of the year 40, end of the year also 40. And cash beginning of the year 30, end of the year. We assume that the monetary assets and monetary liabilities are same. No change at all during the year. So 40, 40, 30, 30. And creditors. Creditors are 35. Beginning of the year, end of the year also 35. We have taken all the values. Now you can see here, this reserves. Reserves are 200 rupees, 200 beginning of the year given. Reserves are given. But uh, CPP method reserves, we have to take the balancing figure. Take the total of the asset side 721.37. From 721.37, subtract 393.33 and 35. Subtract balancing figure, you will get 293.04. This is the reserves balancing figure. That's all. So this is the end of problem number 21. Come on, see the 22nd problem. I'm reading out the 22nd problem. The income statement for the year ended 31st December 2011. And the balance sheet of R limited as on 1st January 2011 are set out below. So we are given the opening balance sheet 1st January 2011. And we are given the income statement for the year ended 31st December 2011. Income statement you see carefully, sales are given 1,50,000, cost of goods sold, opening stock FIFO method 30,000, purchases 60,000, total 90,000, less closing stock 10,000. So uh, cost of goods sold, we got 80,000, deduct 1,50,000 minus 80,000, 70,000 is the gross profit. From this we deduct operating expenses 20,000, depreciation 10,000, interest on loan 5,000. Total expenses 35,000. So retained profit is 35,000. This is the income statement according to historical method. Now, debtors and creditor balances remain constant throughout the year. That means there is no change in debtors and creditors. Whatever beginning of the year we have, the same. Balance sheet is given share capital 1 lakh, bank loan 25,000, creditors 35,000. Plant and machinery 1 lakh, stock 30,000, debtors 18,000, cash 12,000. Total of the balance sheet 1,60,000. Debtors and creditor balances remain constant throughout the year. General price indices were given below. Index numbers are given on 1st January 2011, 200. Beginning of the year index number 200. Average for the year, during the year average 240. And end of the year 31st December 2011, 300. So opening index, closing index, average index are given. You are required to prepare the final accounts for the year 2011 after adjusting the price level changes. That means we have to convert this income statement and balance sheet from historical method to CPP method. Because uh, price indexes are given, by using price index, we convert it into CPP values. So we have to make the income statement and balance sheet according to CPP method. Now, see carefully. Profit and loss statement as per CPP method for the year ended. The three columns I have prepared that is HCA, historical cost accounting that is given in the problem. Then CF, correction factor. Correction factor will take the ratio, ratio of index number at the end of the year divided by index number at the time when the transaction took place. And CPP, current purchasing power value, right? First of all, sales are given 1,50,000. End of the year index number is 300. End of the year 300. And the sales are conducted during the year. During the year means we'll take the average. So average index number is given in the problem 240. 
240 is the average index during the year. So we'll take 300 by 240. This is the CF correction factor. So 150,000 into 300 by 240, one addition find it. This is the CPP value of sales. Now cost of goods sold, opening stock. Opening stock historical value 30,000. The opening stock, the CF will be taken the index at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, index number was 200. So 300 by 200. Because opening index we have taken 30,000 into 300 by 200, 45,000. Purchases. The historical cost of purchase 60,000. And the purchases are made during the year. So again, we'll take the average 240. 300 by 240 into 60,000. Now add up 90,000, 1 lakh 20,000 from this closing stock. It is given in the problem the business follows FIFO method, first in, first out method. That means the closing stock is remaining completely from purchases because the old lot was already sold. Whatever closing stock is there that is remaining from purchases only because we are following FIFO method, first in, first out. So what is the CF for purchases? 300 by 240. Same 300 by 240 will take for closing stock. So multiply 10,000 into 300 by 240, 12,500, deduct, we'll get COGS. 90 minus 10, 80, 120 minus 12,500, 1 lakh 7,500, this is the cost of goods sold. Now sales minus cost of goods sold will get the gross profit. So A minus B, A minus B, 150 minus 80 is 70,000. 187,500 minus 107,500, 80,000. These are the gross profit C. From gross profit, we deduct all other expenses. Operating expenses are given 20,000. The operating expenses are uh, conducted during the year. During the year means we'll take the average. Average index is 240. So 300 by 240 into 20,000. Depreciation. Depreciation actually when the asset was purchased, not given in the problem. When the asset was purchased, not given. In that case, we take the index at the beginning of the year. Depreciation will be calculated on the asset value and asset value will take opening. So opening index was 200. So depreciation 300 by 200 into 10,000, 15,000. Interest on loan. Here we have to make the assumption. It is not given in the problem. We assume that interest on loan is paid at the end of the year. Interest is not paid during the year. It is paid at the end of the year. End of the year means the index number was 300. So 300 by 300. Because it is paid on the last day. So 5000 into 300 by 300 is 5000. Take the total 35000 total expenses. 45000 total expenses. Now subtract C minus D. 70 minus 35. 35000 is the net profit as per historical. And uh, here 80,000 minus 45,000, 35,000 is the CPP net profit. So net profit is same for both. Now loss on monetary assets. So separately we have to make a statement to find out monetary loss or gain. We consider monetary assets and monetary liabilities. So what are the loss or gain on monetary assets and liability we separately calculate. So here we are getting monetary loss. Net monetary loss we are getting 2500. So here minus loss on monetary assets in the statement shown separately. Separately a statement will make to find out the loss. Net monetary loss 2500. Subtract 35,000 minus 2500, 3200. Remember this monetary loss will be applied only in CPP. It will not be applied in HCA. HCA will not consider the price level changes. The price level changes will be considered only in CPP method. So 2500 subtract, 32500 is the retained earnings as per the CPP method. As per the historical method, it is 35000. That's all. Income statement completed. Now I'll make a statement to find out the net monetary loss or gain on holding monetary assets and monetary liabilities. Now statement of gain or loss on monetary assets. First, we'll take monetary assets on 1st January 2011. Debtors cash. In the problem, opening balance sheet is given. Opening balance sheet, debtors are 18,000 given in the problem. When we are taking opening, then index also opening will take 300 by 200. So 18,000 into 300 by 200, 27,000. Then cash. Opening cash is given in the opening balance sheet, 12,000. 
Again, it is opening. So 300 by 200. We'll get 18,000. Increase in cash. How much cash increased during the year? This I will show it in working notes. In working notes, I will show it. Here, see the working notes. Increase in cash has been calculated as follows. Sale proceed. The goods are sold for rupees 150,000. This is the income. Inflow of cash. When goods are sold, there is inflow of cash. The 150,000 cash received on account of sales. From sales, we deduct the expenditure paid. The expenses are paid for purchasing the goods and for other operating expenses. So here you can say purchases are 60,000 and operating expenses paid are 20,000. So 60,000 payment made for purchases, 20,000 payment made for operating expenses. So here amount paid for purchases, amount paid for operating expenses, total 80,000. So 150,000 rupees received and 80,000 paid. So remaining amount is 70,000 rupees. This is the increase in cash during the year. During the year cash increased. One point you have to remember here in note I have written. Cash paid on account of interest on loan has not been considered. Now see, here interest on loan 5000 rupees are also paid. But that is not considered while calculating increase because this interest on loan pay is assumed to be paid at the end of the year, not during the year. Interest on loan is paid at the end of the year. So it will not have any effect on the monetary asset gain or loss. It will not have any effect on monetary gain or loss because this is paid only on the last day of the French year. So cash paid on account of interest on loan has not been considered because it is assumed that interest is paid on the last day that is 31st 12, 2011. It will not have any effect on gain or loss on monetary assets. No effect. So ultimately how much is the increase in cash? 70,000. So here increase in cash 70,000. But this increase in cash is during the year. During the year means we'll take the average, average index. Average index is 240. So 300 by 240 into 70,000, 87.5. So total of monetary assets at the end of the year. Beginning of the year 18,000, 12,000, 70,000. So total monetary assets on 31st December 2011 is 1 lakh rupees as per HCA. Historical cost account. As per CPP method, it is 1 lakh 32 500. Assets should be 1 lakh 32 500. So there is a loss. Monetary loss on holding assets are 1 lakh 32 500 minus 1 lakh 32 500. So business will incur monetary loss or purchasing power loss on holding assets. Monetary assets, 32 500. Now, monetary gain on holding liabilities. Two monetary liabilities are there, bank loan and creditors. Bank loan and creditors are these two monetary liabilities. The bank loan beginning of the year 25,000. So we multiply 300 by 200, 37,500. 30, Similarly, creditors beginning of the year 35,000. Again, 300 by 200, 52,500. The total monetary liabilities at the end of the year, 31st December, is 60,000 according to HCA method. And according to CPP method, 90,000. So how much is the gain on holding monetary liability? 90,000 minus 60,000. 30,000 rupees is the monetary gain or purchasing power gain on holding monetary liabilities. So 30,000 rupees is the monetary gain on liabilities. So we are having a loss of 32,500 and a gain of 30,000 will set off. So which is more here? Monetary loss is more. Monetary loss is more. So 32,500 minus 30,000, 2,500 is the net monetary loss on holding monetary assets, monetary items. So this 2,500 is a loss. So here I have deducted. Net monetary loss on monetary assets in the statement shown separately, 2,500. That's all. Now we'll come to the balance sheet. The balance sheet as on 31st 12, 2011, Liabilities, assets, liability side first, share capital. Beginning of the year, share capital is given 1 lakh in the problem, opening balance sheet 1 lakh rupees. Now we have to convert it into end of the year CPP value. What is the end of the year? 300. End of the year index is 300. Beginning of the year index is 200. So 300 by 200. 1 lakh into 300 by 200, 1 lakh 50,000 over. 
Now retail earnings. Retail earnings according to CPP method already we have calculated. CPP retail earnings are 32,500. So here 32,500 retail earnings. And bank loan and creditors, this will remain same. Whatever we have in the beginning of the year, same is there at the end of the year. Because it is given in the problem. The debtors and creditors are remaining same. So whatever is the I mean gain or loss on holding this monetary items already we have considered here. This monetary, uh, this bank loan and creditors are monetary liabilities. And the gain or loss on monetary liabilities already we have considered here. Bank loan and creditors we have already considered. So we should not again consider here. Already same way. 25,030. The liabilities are completed 2,42,500. Now come to asset side, plant and machinery. Beginning of the year, plant and machinery was 1 lakh rupees. Now we have to convert it into CPP value, 300 by 200. So 300 by 200 into 1 lakh, 1 lakh 50,000. Now depreciation is 10%. How 10% we got it? In the problem it is given, the beginning uh, plant and machinery, the value, value of plant and machinery at the beginning of the year, 1 lakh. 1 lakh rupees was the value of plant and machinery at the beginning of the year given in the balance sheet right and how much depreciation provided during the year on land and plant and machinery here you can say 10,000 10,000 rupees is the depreciation provided during the year on the value of plant and machinery of 1 lakh so on 1 lakh rupees we have provided 10,000 so it means there is 10% depreciation on machinery 10% depreciation on machinery. So similarly, depreciation 10% of 1,50,000, 15,000. So 135,000 is the written down value of plant and machinery. Next comes stock. Closing stock already we have calculated 10,000 rupees is the historical value of closing stock into 300 by 240, 12,500. So 12,500 is the value of the closing stock. Here I have taken 12,500. Debtors. Debtors will remain same. Whatever debtors we have in the beginning of the year, the same debtors at the end of the year, 18,000. Now, closing cash balance. Now, cash balance at the end of the year. These are calculated in working note. Here, last working note you can see. Cash in hand on 31st December 2011 is calculated as follows. Cash in hand on 1st January 2011, 12,000. At the beginning of the year, cash in hand, 12,000. Add increase during the year. Increase in cash as calculated above. Here you can see how much is the cash increase? 70,000. 70,000 rupees cash increased during the year. So add up. 12,000 plus 70,000, 82,000. Minus cash paid for interest on loan at the end of the year. At the end of the year, interest on loan 5,000 rupees paid. So deduct 5,000, 77,000 rupees is the cash in hand at the end of the year. So this 77,000 I have taken here. Now total of the balance sheet is 2,42,500, that's it. Balance sheet hit over. So this is the end of problem number 22, 22nd problem we have completed. So I have explained these last two, two three problems are lengthy problems because we have to convert the income statement and balance sheet from historical method into CPP method. So after doing two, three problems, you will get the command on how to convert it according to CPP method. Okay, if you are satisfied with my lecture, give a like to the video. Share my channel in your group, in your friend circle so that more students can watch the video. Give your comment and lastly, don't forget to subscribe my channel. We'll continue the next problem in the next video. Come on, now we'll start the next problem, 23rd. The balance sheet of Himachal Limited as on 1st April. 2001 and profit and loss statement for the year ended is given. So balance sheet is given at the beginning of the year, share capital, 13% debenture, current liabilities. Plant and machinery, fixtures and furniture and fixture, inventory, data, cash. So this is the opening balance sheet. Profit and loss statement for the year ended 31st March 2002. Sales are given, cost of goods sold, opening inventory, purchase less, closing inventory, gross profit, less operating expenses, interest on debenture, depreciation on machinery, depreciation on furniture, net profit. So complete income statement is given as per the historical cost method. Debtors and current liability balances remain constant throughout the year. Interest on debenture was paid at the end of the year, 31st March 2002. The general price index was as follows. On 1st April, beginning of the year, 300. 
average for the year 320 and end of the year 31st March 360. You are required to prepare the financial statement for the year 2001-2 after adjusting for price level changes under current purchasing power method. This problem is exactly similar to the previous problem. See carefully. Profit and loss statement as per the CPP method for the year ended 31st March 2002. Right? Let's see. Sales. The end of the year index number is 360. And beginning of the oh, sorry average during the year is 320. For sales, we will take the average from sales opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. Purchase opening stock we have taken 360 by 300 because opening index 300. Purchases are made during the year, so divide by 320, 360 by 320. And closing stock is coming from purchases, so same 360 by 320 for closing stock because we are following FIFO method. Then cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating expenses, interest on debentures. Operating expenses 360 by 320 because operating expenses are incurred during the year. Whereas interest on debenture is paid at the end of the year. It is given at the end of the year. That's why 360 by 360. Same. Depreciation on machinery. Machinery we have to take at the beginning of the year. Beginning of the year index number was 300. So 360 by 300 for depreciation on machinery and furniture. The net profit we got. Loss on monetary asset in the statement separately shown. So monetary items we have to take separately monetary assets and monetary liabilities. We are going to get loss on monetary items 17,375. Subtract we will get 73,950 retail earnings this will go to balance sheet. Now statement of gain or loss on monetary assets particulars monetary assets debtors. Beginning of the year debtors are 50,000. Just like the previous problem, exactly same what we have done in the previous problem. So 360 by 300 opening, cash 1 lakh 360 by 300 opening, increase in cash, increase in cash we have calculated here. Sale proceeds 10 lakh minus amount paid for purchase, amount paid for operating expense. Deduct 1 lakh 39,000 is the increase in cash. So 1 lakh 39,000 increase in cash. Here we take 360 by 320 because this is during the year average so we'll take monetary assets at the end of the year as per historical method 2 lakh 89 as per cpp 3 lakh 36 375 the so loss monetary loss on assets is 47375 there's a loss on monetary assets now monetary liabilities beginning of the year monetary liabilities are debentures and current liability convert it into cpp 360 by 300 for both so monetary gain on liability 30000 so gain 30,000, loss 47,375. So net loss will be 17,375. Here we have taken. So we have completed statement of gain or loss. Now balance sheet. Balance sheet share capital beginning of the year 4 lakh. So multiply 360 by 300, 4 lakh 84. Retail earnings just now we got it. And 13% depends are exactly same what we have in the beginning of the year. And current liability same. Take the total. Now asset side plant and machinery beginning of the year 3 lakh into 360 by 300 3 lakh 60 thousand from this depreciation 15 percent how we got 15 percent see here in the opening balance sheet 3 lakh rupees is the plant and machinery whereas depreciation on plant and machinery you can see 45 thousand historical cost method depreciation on machinery 45 thousand so on 3 lakh rupees 45 thousand depreciation it comes to 15 percent 45 thousand divided by 3 lakh into 100 15 percent so 15% of 360,000, 354,000, 3,6,000. Furniture 40,000 into 360 by 348,000. Depreciation 10%. How 10%? Furniture value beginning of the year 40,000 and depreciation on furniture 4,000. Furniture per depreciation 4,000. So it comes to 10% depreciation on furniture. Right? So 4,800. Inventory 78,750 closing stock inventory means closing stock So closing stock 78,750 Then debtors opening closing remains same cash at the end of the year cash at the end of the year here I have calculated Opening cash 1 lakh increase in cash during the year 1 lakh 39,000 then interest on loan paid 13,000 So 2 lakh 26,000 is the cash at the end of their balance sheet target This is the end of problem number 23 now 24th and 25th problem are exactly same what we have done in 23rd problem. No difference at all. So you can do it yourself. I am giving you as your practice problem. 24th and 
25th no change exactly same what we have done in 23rd so you have to do it yourself 24th and 25th so this is the end of problems on CPP method in the next video I am going to start the problems on CCA method current cost accounting method there's a second and last method on accounting for price level changes so if you are satisfied with my lecture give a like to the video share my channel with your friends with your friend groups and lastly don't forget to subscribe my channel in the next video inshallah i'm going to start the next topic cca method